This is Patrick Mamali from Pestilence, and you're listening to the Phantasm Podcast. Phantasm. What the fuck is up, and welcome to the Phantasm Podcast. I'm Corey Gorkreis, with me, Dr. Vincent West. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. And, uh... What an amazing episode we got for you guys. This is for the old schoolers out there. We have, well, Doctor, I'll let you introduce the whole fucking thing. You, you landed this. This is amazing. Um, what do we got? We have Patrick from one of my favorite death metal bands, Pestilence. It's and uh, they, they go through the whole damn thing. Um, you can pick up Haiti and now Pestilence's new record. It's been out for a little while. Uh, been meaning to get this episode out to you guys, so... Definitely support Patrick, support Pestilence, support old school death metal, and uh, pick that record up. And uh, the film we got, uh, this is one we've actually not seen before, so um, it's a blue underground print of it. Already we got a hot bitch on the screen, smoke a cigarette. Yeah, we have, uh, for Michelle Sauve, we have uh, Stage Fright, director of Cemetery Man and The Church. All right, well, uh, we got Michael Swaby Space Jam. It's, <laughs> it's weird. It's that was, uh, that was the trailer mm-hmm. for it, guys. So uh, I can't hear myself either. So that was very. Um, I don't know what the deal is with that, but interesting. <clears throat> I'm dead. I think. Just, I don't know. I can hear you. Really? Yeah. I can't hear anything in my. It's dead. <clears throat> there we go. You got it. Yeah, something was. Some faulty wiring kids don't get electrocuted listening to Phantasm. I almost did. But yeah, this is Stage Fright. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a guy's package. Yeah, we've already... We're already <laughs> Spandex package. One of the film here a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> spandex package. <laughs> With some white spandex, too. Um, no, I was talking about the red spandex package. Oh, there you go. Now we got the owl man who is uh, the killer in the film. Spoiler alert. Um which I think is very interesting. Well, we like, don't know what if that is the kid. It's just that's that. That's mask. the mask. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's got the spandex package. I fucking hate owls too. I don't know about you. I don't like birds anyway. So they're a little creepy and they shit everywhere. So I just don't like them. But uh, yeah, 1987. 
Um, <coughs> it's a good if year. You wanna, if you want to go right into it, we'll go into the... Uh, you want me to do the music? Yeah, we'll go right into it. We'll go into our segment, Altering <clears throat> the Future. Altering the Future! Yeah. All right. And on Altering the Future, we'll take you back to uh, <clears throat> the time of the film of the year, and we'll let you know uh, what was what the releases looked like in both movies and in music. So, uh, Doctor, we'll just go right ahead with the with the music here in 1987. Well, it's weird because <clears throat> I'm going to have to kind of play around with this because it's pulling up a bunch of dog shit in here, too. <laughs> We've done 87 quite a bit. Like I said, we do this every well, episode. Well, it kind of so. chaps my ass because I'm sitting here and it's... It's being weird and it's being a buns. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to do this real quick. We're just I'm not just going to kind of touch on stuff. I'm not going to go overboard with it. That wasn't a fart. That was my soda. Okay. May or may um, not have been we'll honest. start with this cuz this just got reissued. We're going to start with the very first CD. Not the very first album. I'm older than that, but the very first CD I ever bought and it just got reissued. It's remastered to a little plug there for it. The 598 Garage Days EP. Nice. Um, Metallica, of course. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> Schizophrenia from Sepultura. Which we were just listening to on the ride over. Death Crush from Mayhem. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Oz of Horror from Possessed. Amazing. Um, so already here in 87, you're getting a lot of essential shit. Racer X, Second Heat, Paul Gilbert, uh, <clears throat> before he was in Mr. Big. It's like a flashy like guitar kind of thing. Uh, Twisted Sister Love is for Suckers. I really like that record. Uh, Live in the Raw from Wasp. A uh, Cacophony, Speed Metal Symphony, Jason Becker awesome. and Marty Friedman. Hell yeah. Um, my favorite Kiss album, Crazy Nights. Love it. Um, my favorite Armored Saint album, Raising Fear. Oh yeah. Um, Alice Cooper, Raise Your Fist and Yell, the self-titled White Snake record, Dream Evil from Dio. Oh, yeah. Abigail from King Diamond. <clears throat> Love it. Uh, Udo from Asep's, uh solo album Animal House. Hell, yeah. Uh, Black Sabbath Eternal Idol to feature the first album with Tony Martin on it, who I love. Yeah, that's good stuff. <clears throat> Exodus Pleasures of the Flesh, the only Exodus record that that's the last Exodus record that I was really like into before they got Rob Dukes. Right. Um, Visual Lies, my favorite Lizzie Borden record. Back for the Attack from Dawkin. Creator tell terrible uncertainty. Um, Bathory under the sign of the black. I'm not really into Bathory, but yeah, it's just not my thing. Uh, Persecution mania from Sodom. Love it. <clears throat> uh, Overkill taking over. A hall the mountain king from Sabotage. The legacy from Testament. Among the living from Anthrax. Um, and now we're gonna get into some. I'm going to close it out real quick with some some of the big boys. Uh, Laws Rocket, Know Your Enemy, underrated Bay Area thrash band. For sure. Absolutely love them. Um, I see a cramp shirt <clears throat> in the movie. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there's no telling what else going on in this crazy-ass movie. Um, let's see here. What have I missed? There's my favorite one of 87, probably. I'm going to back up to that one. Okay, here we go, kids. <clears throat> I'm, I'm rolling it on out. Uh, the Ultraviolence from Death Angel, which is my favorite Death Angel record. It's an amazing record. Um, Scream Bloody Gore from Death. But number one for me, I'm going to have to go into the Pandemonium from Celtic Frost. Fuck yes. And... Uh, I'm going to try to do one more list for you guys, because that was kind of a vague thing. John, Valentine's Day, I got the uh, reissue of that. I remember that. And it sounds so fucking Because I was like, I have that. You it was were a like, very ambitious record. I just ruined his whole moment. He yeah. was like, look what I found. And I was like, yeah, I have all those. But I, I do. I really like those surprised. things. Well, no, you were the one that told me about that record and, you know, how good it was. And I never gave it a listen. You know, I, I like 2 Megatherion and, you know, all that stuff. Um but I'd never heard into the Pandemonium before, so I went and okay. picked it up, and I listened to it for like four weeks straight. And I'm still, I still pop it in every now and then. Very ambitious record. If you guys have never heard it, these are some honorable, shit. honorable mentions. Okay, eighty-seven. 
Uh, join the army from suicidal tendencies. Love it. Um, carnivore retaliation. Oh yeah, Pete Steele, baby. A terror squad from artillery. Um, Not too familiar with artillery. But ignorance that. from Sacred Reich, which I absolutely love. Yep. Split image from Excel, which I love. And uh, what else we have here? I thought there was one more. Oh God. <clears throat> yeah, I, I had to. I had to double check my stuff here because it didn't pull up everything I needed. <clears throat> these are these are some more honorable mentions. Uh, release from agony from destruction. USA for MOD, which I fucking love. Crossover from DRI, which I fucking love. Um, that and Thrash Zone are the shit. Oh yeah. Well, my favorite DRI album is actually. Uh, Oh, four of a kind. Four of a kind, yeah. And then the number one overlooked album that I found on another list that I would have murdered everybody for not mentioning these <laughs> is a classic little thing that is worth a lot of money that I have, which is Testament Live in Endenhoven from yep. 87. And the number one overlooked record, <clears throat> honorable mention that I have to put on here, uh, Release from Agony from Destruction and R.I.P. from Corner. Oh yeah, Corner is one of my favorite bands. I have all their, I have their whole catalog. I think they're very much death metal. I don't consider them a thrash band. I consider them a death metal band. Yeah, they were definitely the and, so part um, of the pioneers. People don't give them enough credit. No, they're those guys are brilliant. Anyway, I'll let you uh, hand it over to you for the uh, film selections for 1987. And it's movie time. So it let's is. See what we got. Pop some popcorn. Gore Christ has got you. All right, and of course I save the horror for last, so we'll just do regular movies here. We got a lot of good ones. Uh, we got The Untouchables. Love um, it. We got Good Morning Vietnam. Can't get into it. Raising Arizona. Never seen it. Can you Nicholas believe that? Cage. Oh, that movie's hilarious. I've never seen it. Uh, Over the Top. Sylvester Stallone. Love it. We got the Living Daylights. Absolutely love T. Dalt. Oh, it's it's amazing. Love you, T. Dalt. Um, Masters of the Universe with Dolph Lundgren. Love it. Um, Let's see. No oh. Way Out. Kevin Costner? Costner, yeah. Interesting. It's Adventures in Babysitting. That's a big one. I've seen that too many uh, times. It's good, Spaceballs <clears throat> I love. It's a great movie. Got Fatal Attraction. Can't deal with it. Glenn Close, Michael Douglas. It's it's good for it. It's effective. It's yeah, effective. It's just sure. not my thing. Uh, Battery's not included. Can't deal with it. The, 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 <laughs> I can't fucking deal with that there's movie. There's a part in that movie that cracks me the fuck up. It's not even supposed to be funny. There's this kid... And his mom's talking on the phone. It sounds kitchen. like a movie about a vibrator. Yeah, and the, and the yeah, it, it vibrates on its own. Um, and the kid is just like slamming a basketball or something while her while his mom's trying to talk, and it's just the most ridiculous scene for no reason. And that's the whole reason I like that movie. Anyway, uh, Beverly Hills Cop Two, love it. You got Lethal Weapon, OG, love it. Princess Bride. Got the late and great uh, Andre the Giant was in that famously. I never liked that movie. It was kind of, I don't know. I love it, but I've seen it. I've like buried it how much I've seen it. I can't it. deal with it. Um, good stuff, though. Uh, essential watching. Uh, the Running Man. Good shit. It's my favorite Schwarzenegger movie. Yeah, it's good shit. Uh, did I say Spaceballs? I'll say it again. You already Spaceballs. Yeah. Playing Strange and Automobiles. Yeah, it's a good movie. Um, yeah, and then the last one. Well, no, we got Superman for the Quest for Peace. I like that movie. It's bad, but it's good. Yeah. It's Chris Reeves. It's my it's favorite bad, Superman. It's bad, but it's good. And uh, the last one I'll put on here, and as a tribute as well, is uh, Full Metal Jacket. So rest in peace, uh, Arlie Army. And then we move on to horror, and you'll see... His best movie was Fletch Lives. <laughs> yes, which is on Blu right now. So, um, But you can see some of the things we've already done in here. And we talked about it on the last episode, which is kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> I'll relate this into horror just because uh, we got RoboCop. I love that movie. We got Predator. It's which one uh, of your favorite movies. Yeah, Predator is one of my all-time You're wearing favorites. your Christmas present. I am, my Predator t-shirt. And uh, shout out to Martin Van Drunen, uh, who was formerly of Pestilence. We uh, dedicated Predator to his interview we did with him uh, way back when for uh, to plug in Coming Death by Asphyx. Uh, so... If you're a fan of that, shout out to Martin. One day we'll we'll have some brewskis. Um, the Witches of Eastwick. It's a weird movie. It is weird. Um, 
I'll save that for last. I do like Jack Nicholson. That he's a butthole. Uh, <clears throat> Near Dark. Very it's underrated. a great vampire movie film. That is good. Uh, Bad Taste. You know, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna cut through the bullshit with Peter Jackson real quick. I like two Peter Jackson films. Okay, I like. <clears throat> I like Dead Alive, and I like Frighteners, and that's it. I don't yeah. like anything else he's ever done. That Lord of the Rings stuff, I have to be in a mood to watch it. I don't hate it. I think it's incredibly well executed. I'm just not into fantasy stuff. Right. It's just not my thing. I think he's a great director, but those are my favorite things that he ever did. I love the Frighteners like to death. Oh, sure. And I really love Dead Alive, and I'm proud to say I have the Dead Alive Blu-ray that goes for about 200 bucks. Yes, you do. All right, what else? Bad Taste, I could never get into. It's just weird. It is weird. It's very slapstick and strange. Uh, one of your all-time favorites, Monster Squad, 1987. Yeah, that's comparative to you liking Ghostbusters, me liking that film. Uh, Prince of Darkness. I'm going to tell you something about that movie real quick. I am a, everyone knows probably this listen. If you've listened to us before, I'm a huge John Carpenter fan. I'm a huge fan of that film. And I love Donald Pleasant. The beautiful steel book that they just put out. That's incredible. Uh, is, is, is really nice. So yeah, I love go that movie. Go to your local Best Buy. You can get it there first. Yep. So go check it out there. Um, one of my favorites. 20 bucks. One of my favorites on this list. And actually I'll say that after this one, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. We mentioned Doc and Back from the Attack came out the same year because Dream Warriors, the title song, is on that record. Um, Do you know that song was actually initially supposed to be a throwaway? That's crazy. Like it wasn't, they weren't going to put it on the record like they wrote it for the film. Right. And, uh, yeah, they went and put that. And Doc and actually back together if you live in certain countries, all four original members, which is weird. Another people on this podcast would probably care about that. Whenever they can... Uh, get along for five minutes. They'll do some shows. Yeah, it's for money. I mean, I would too. There's live stuff out. Apparently, you can buy now of like a Blu-ray and oh, a CD. Awesome. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Uh, Jaws: The Revenge. Kind of a turd, but yeah. kind of good. It's, still it's got Jaws, it's got Lance Jaws. Guest in it from Last Starfighter, yeah. directed by Nick Castle, and of course he's in Halloween too. Sure. Let me get you a Coke here, Corey. <laughs> Corey, look, I got you a Coke. Thanks, you really did. That's from Halloween too. Yeah, um, that is okay. What else? Uh, Evil Dead 2. <clears throat> My favorite vampire film I still haven't heard mentioned. I was saving that for last. Okay, sorry. Because we had uh, talked about that in our other... We did. One of the other We episodes. summoned we watching did. Stage Fright together. Okay, second to last, and this is probably goes down as one of my favorites from this year. Um, topping out Robocop and uh, maybe not Predator, but close. Um, Hellraiser. Clyde Barker. Which, uh, Texas Frightmare Weekend, uh, if any of you guys are actually going, I don't know. Um, Alamo Draft House, Thursday, May 3rd, the day before the convention. At 10.15, they're doing a screening of Hellraiser with uh, a live Q&A from the cast, which is Doug Bradley and Simon Bradford and, and all those cats. So that's going to be a lot of fun, and looking forward to that. Um, maybe I'll get some stuff for you guys to, to watch. It'll be cool. Maybe. Um, maybe he will. Maybe he won't. I forgot about Dirty Dancing. That's the number one. Dude, Dragnet. You didn't mention Dragnet. And Dragnet. A lot of it's it's fucking me up. There's a lot of shit not on here. Dragnet. Ha- Hamburger Hill. I didn't mention that. You know, Hamburger Hill is actually an underrated Vietnam. Film. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's pretty it's, gory it's really and it's. Yeah. Um, I will tell you right now, my favorite Vietnam film. Um, I'm gonna see if Corey can guess it. I have two, mm. and one is popular and one is not. Platoon. That's one of them. That's my favorite. And it's Charlie Sheen. I mean, I knew he would like yeah, that. Yeah, I love that movie. And Tom Berenger. Um, and and Keith David. Oh, of course. Uh, Casualties of War with Michael J. Fox. Oh, okay. Penn. That's a good one. All right, number one for uh, the list here, rounding out here on the horror. FYI, I wasn't saying those films were 87, though, by the way. Right, so. yeah, 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 got you. Uh, Lost Boys. Just watched it the other day. I do not understand love why... It. Scream Factory, because they're starting to acquire Warner Brothers titles, why that's not like a three-disc limited box. I'm sure, I'm sure they're waiting for something. Anniversary. I know. mean, I, I that film, it's funny. Corey Feldman has made a career of touring and playing and butchering songs off that. He has. Because he's a fucking putz. I've met him. He's a he's kind of a piece of shit human being. And I <laughs> it's the truth. He's also a Christian asshole. And I, I just don't like him. Like, I like his movies, 
but to me, Corey Haim is the oh yeah is the meat and potatoes of that, and uh, for sure, I can't. I uh, went dead again. I don't know what the hell is going on there. Whoa, yeah, no. You got it. Uh, okay, okay, there we go. I thought I'd killed myself again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just don't like him, man. You know, I, I like his movies, but if you if you ever have the unfortunate pleasure of meeting him, he's an asshole. Um, and if you ever want to just literally put a, put a paper bag over your head, because you'll be so ashamed <laughs> of watching it, watch any live performance from him. He is literally talentless. <laughs> but you know when you're molested by Michael Jackson maybe that's why you're maybe that's why he's all fucked up I don't know but Corey Haim I like damn I like Corey Haim I know I just slammed him in the door I don't care he's a fucking asshole <laughs> he he really was he was a fucking asshole like I'll tell the story for everybody listening out there he literally was he had stuff on his table he was like I'm in this movie I'm in Goonies I'm in this I'm also I'm also in the Burbs I'm in this anybody that knows me knows the Burbs is like one of my favorite films ever made so meeting him and of course Halloween excuse me Friday 13th part 4 you know he's the OG Tommy Jarvis and he's a fucking douchebag <laughs> I just I'm sorry I had a really distaste for him and another thing that if people don't know this he did not help Corey Haim when Corey Haim was basically broke and homeless and I, I will I think that's a really shitty thing to do because those guys were synonymous with one another and uh, that two Corey show he conned him into doing that to just Ooh, kind of flush him down the toilet. An axe to the mouth. That's a really good scene. It was a that's pickaxe. What Corey, that's what Corey Feldman basically did to Corey Haim's career and life. But anyway, that's my rant about that. I can't stand that guy. Axe to the mouth. Uh, some uh, trivia here for you uh, all listening and uh, hopefully watching. Uh, Barbara Capisti. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Who... Um, Trying to see what her name is in this movie. I guess it's uh, Alicia. She has been in a ton of really good Italian films. She was uh, a New York Ripper. She was in opera. Uh, she was in the church as Lisa. And she was also in Cemetery Man. Um, All his films. Yep. Well, of course, the first one being Fulci. Um, and then Argento. Um, but but I meant the, you know, the... Oh, it's funny, I just got opera too. But Yeah, when she's in that film. I think a lot of the the more popular uh, Italian directors were kind of all in house together. It seems like oh yeah, at this time like Argento and and sure. Michelle here. Which I, I will tell you this. I I want to actually tell tell Corey this because I, I forgot because I was so happy that the church is finally available from Scorpion releasing. It's available now. You can get it really cheap off of a deep discount. Um, but I wanted to say that, uh, Michelle Sauve that we're watching that he's my favorite Italian director. Like this guy's my shit. Like I just love him. Like I've, I've always loved cemetery man. I've always loved the church though. The church is like my favorite thing. This guy ever did. And honestly, I am really enjoying this film. Yeah. It looks beautiful. The print's great. This uh, movie's fucking fantastic. It's, it's really entertaining. And, uh, any character that's just named Lucifer. I mean, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> The character Brett, played by Giovanni Lombardo, um, Redis, I don't know how to say his name, I'm really bad about that. Um, he was in Cannibal Ferox, um, nice. who he actually regretted playing that role, because he's synonymously, uh, synonymous, <laughs> synonymously uh, known for playing like villains in some of these films, so Cannibal Ferox he did. Um I have a question for you. House real quick. at the edge of the uh, house at the edge of the park. He also was in City of the Living Dead, which is another Fulci film. That's one of the uh, the uh, Gates of Hell movies. So it's pretty awesome. He's also in the remake of The Omen, which I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. And he's in the Church also. So the Church Two of these is actors are be so fucking good. So that's pretty amazing. I want to check something because I think we missed something. And if I'm right, oh yeah, we did. Kids, <clears throat> we missed a big, 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 big horror movie that Corey and I like, and that's Creep Show Two. That's right, eighty seven. There's which, a lot of stuff. I'm which to me, up. I'm going to go ahead and just say this right now: give me that any day over the first one. Yeah, Creep Show Two is way better. It's it's just a better. Is. It's just a better film. I mean, it's I, more ambitious. That's not too. a shot against George. I George, I know, was still heavily involved with it as his company funded it. Right. But I know Stephen had kind of pulled back at that point. But 
you know, whatever. It's like, I just, I don't know. I really, I I, I like the first group show, but I love the second one. The second one to me is just every, and that, all of it. Thanks for the ride, lady. It's just the shit. Yeah, you know, when Arrow released that uh, limited set, God, beautiful. Even the, the regular standard version still looks really good. Um, so for you collectors out there, that's definitely, do what I did and find it on eBay. I found it pretty cheap, about 38 bucks. I mean, it usually goes for way more, the, uh, the three disc limited, which is a better deal. You get the comic book with it. It looks really nice. I'm trying to see what else we got. Here? Let's try and IMDB this thing. I don't know what made me think of it, but I was sitting there going, I was like, "Goddamn, damn creep show too, man. Like we got a, there's that, the gates, another one. Yeah. The gate was 87 blood diners. Another one. Yeah, there's a lot not popping up on my thing. It's like me with that goddamn album. Well, thing. too much came up in '87 too. That they, I mean, you would think they would show all that stuff. Um, we'll see. <clears throat> Stage right during a screening at Necromant. The first Necromantic came out that year in Street Trash. Yep. Return to Horror High. The second House movie, Dolls, which we've done on this podcast. The Video Dead, which is a great movie. It is good. Get on Screen Factory paired with uh, Terror Vision, which I like. The bit. Outing, which I love that movie. The Hidden is another good movie from that year. Their stage fright, how funny look. No, this is, is actually uh, Michael Soave's Silent first... Night, Deadly Night Two, Corey's favorite film. This is actually his directorial debut. Is this film? Well, I tell you, it's it's a pleasure to watch it because I I'm a huge fan of this guy's stuff, man. I think he's. He's Americanized enough why I think why I really enjoy it. And the split between Corey and I on, on Italian horror, I think, is Argento, probably is our common medium. Yeah, definitely. And you've definitely got me into a lot of uh, <clears throat> stuff that I <clears throat> that I kind of shot away from just because, you know... I think Italian films, Argento stuff I've always liked. I think Italian films are more... Because it was more like David Lynch horror movies. Right. They're a lot more fun to watch with, with somebody else. I mean... But this guy, man, I've always liked this guy's shit. Yeah. Watching Italian horror alone is kind of weird to me. Like, I've I've done it, obviously, but it doesn't feel as It's right. just like Demons. Demons is an, an amazing horror film. Demons 2 is a piece of shit. It's a better bar, though, yeah. That's a terrible movie. The first one's amazing. I've never seen the second one. It's awful. The first one's It's not so worth good. the paper it's printed on. Like, it's awful. <laughs> it really is. It's a piece of shit. It's got to accept on the first one. I mean, what else do you want? I like the soundtrack. It's kind of like a goth soundtrack to the second one, but I just don't like the film. It's really, it's really slow, and it's there's hardly any gore in it, and it's really just kind of, I don't know. Yeah, they didn't really need to make a sequel to that movie. First one's so iconic too, you know. But a lot of a lot of Italian stuff that I've that I've been exploring since, you know, I was a teenager, and then now again on this podcast, Bava is somebody that I'm not a big fan of. Mario Bava or no. Roberto? No, Mario. I just don't. I mean, he paved the way for it. But I, it's still, I get it, you know, but it's still, it's just, it's too, I don't know. I just don't. And the Argentos and the Fulci's were coming up, you're just like, damn, this is, right. this is Italian. Now, Fulci right. stuff, you've really turned me on to this stuff, so much fun to watch. And It is, it's just he's, brutal. But he's completely, incredibly artistic as well, And I, but yeah. I just, I can't do the, I can't do that, the Bavis, I don't like it. I mean, it's older, um, I would, I would go the cannibal films over that stuff, even. Right, like I love Cannibal Ferox, I love Cannibal Holocaust. Well, I mean, I've I've spent a lot of money on, I've I've got some really nice Bava collections at at my home, and like, I just Bay don't of, watch Bay them. Of, I don't watch Blood them. Is the is the oh, pinnacle. We, that was the shit. That's I've got it. that. That's that, like, that movie's the shit. That's the Bava we did that on here. We did. Yeah. We did a standalone uh, episode with that one. One of our earlier ones. But um, yeah. If you're gonna skip over Baba, don't skip over Bay of Blood. That's like the, <clears throat> that's the El. Primo. Some of that other shit I bought, I just like I don't know. I wasn't crazy um, about it. Yeah, Blood and Black Lace is good. That's a you know. I've got that one. I've never opened it. That it's one a is good. Book. That one is good. Um, what else did you do? Kill Baby Kill. Which, you know, a lot of it's like early '60s. So, you know, Bay of Blood was '71. So you're getting, I mean, you know. Got rabid dogs. Here's uh, here's my thing. If I'm watching Black anything Sunday, from the '60s, there's Black Sabbath. I mean, 
If I'm watching the Black Sabbath, I love. If you're talking about the one with Karloff in it, yeah, that's Baba. That's a great movie. See, I do, okay, I do like that. He's like paved the way for all that stuff. But that's what I'm saying. Like, but see, Black. Sa- here's the difference. To go with back that, and though. watch it now. I, I don't know. It's, it's, <clears throat> that movie though plays more like a Hammer film. That's why I like it. Yeah, it's good. But <clears throat> you got to have. You know, he's he definitely paved the way for a lot of the, the horror and. You know, I got into an argument with a guy online recently. I'm more of a Bay of Blood kind of guy because I'm I don't have I'm younger. I don't have as much of a taste for the the '60s stuff. You know, I love Night of the Living Dead. I love he was trying. I love to, the Hammer stuff. Love it, and you know, Creature from the Light. Amicus shit's good actually. too. But see, he yeah. was he was trying to basically tell me that Vincent Price's only good film was. Uh, House of Wax. I completely disagree with that. That movie is so fucking old, and it it really even he wasn't crazy about that film. I mean, House on Haunted Hill, nothing. No, I'm talking about this guy was saying House of Wax was his best film, and I was like, "You're a fucking no. idiot!" Like you, I mean, give me give me any anything that he did with Roger Corman over that film, and I have that movie. I have everything that he has ever done. But Scream Factory is about to put the Tingler out, which I'm excited to get. But that's awesome. Like The Fly, that's another one. That movie's completely fucking overrated. And he's a support cast member in that. He's not a fucking direct cast member. And these other, like, idiots that think that because he's fucking in Edward Scissorhands, it's like, that was Tim Burton's homage to him as a as a horror actor. It had nothing to do with, you know... Yeah. <clears throat> it's fucking retarded, but I... Not not a not a big fan of House of Wax. I, it's not something I ever... It's not a go-to film for me, whereas the Corman stuff that, that he and Vincent collaborated with, I love. Uh... It's not a, not a fan of it, man. I don't. It's it's kind of like talking about slasher stuff with people. Like I know a lot of people that like these like Canadian slashers. I think Canadian slashers fucking suck. What are some of those? Any of that shit on Code Red? Any of that garbage? Oh yeah. Or the, those those fucking turds? Those those stupid. Uh, oh god. Uh, I mean, I've wasted my money on them. <laughs> There's a lot of early like Scream Factory titles that were these Canadian slasher. They're fucking garbage. It's like. You know, give me it's give grocery me, store special. Just give me any low budget, you know, slasher from America any all day long, or even or even Italian for that matter. I just I can't do the Canadian slasher stuff. I can't think of any off the top of my head. They're just they're fucking awful. I've wasted my fucking money on that. I end up selling them on fucking eBay. <laughs> they're just fucking garbage. Um. There's a lot of movies like that though. You know, there's a there's a lot of movies that like I liked as a kid. And you try to go back and watch it now, and it's like this is fucking stupid. Like the movie Madman, I can't really do that movie. Madman, uh, the Vinegar Syndrome print of that movie too looks like it was shot on a goddamn Betamax, and they put it on Blu-ray. Here's some good Canadian slashers. I'll say the good ones. We got Terror Train. That's a good one. I'm not a fan of that movie. You don't like Terror Train? No, I do not. Uh, Curtains, which was that was awful. That's pretty bad. <laughs> I'll just name uh, My Bloody Valentine. I can't do that movie, I didn't man. know it was Canadian. I can't do that film. It's not. I don't know. I can't do it. I like the holiday films. If it's not Halloween or Silent Deadly Night, I'm good. I just don't like that movie. I just don't think it's scary. I think it's stupid. Uh, Prom Night. Never liked that movie. I, I wasted my money on it, too. It's got Jamie Lee Curtis. She can't even save that piece of shit. Yeah. Um, what else? Is that the Herschel Gordon Lewis movie? What? No, that's Cannibal Girls. That's uh, Ivan Reitman. I've never seen that movie. And Eugene Levy's in it? Never seen it. It's weird. Um, let's see, Visiting Hours. Deranged, Deranged. Is a good Visiting one. Hours, I will give. That's got Shatner in it yep. and uh, Michael Ironside. That's a good movie. Yeah. Deranged Th- is good. Deranged is good. I did not know that was Canadian. Yep. So some of these, you know, I'm going to eat my own food and on it. But no, whatever. I mean, there's more bad Visiting things. Hours, though. Look, Visiting Hours, Visiting Hours box cover. I'm going to have Corey pull it up here and look at it. Tell me this. Pull up the 80s box cover for Visiting Hours and tell me that's not scary as fuck. Especially if you're scared of hospitals. That one. That's fucking scary. Yeah, it's like the lights are like of the It's fucking scary. Like that's skull. fucking scary. It's got the RX for the hours. That's brilliant marketing yeah, right that's there. Good. That's a good movie. Um, Black Christmas, overrated. That movie fucking sucks. Overrated. I wasted my money on that. Bought the Scream Factory version. That movie fucking is boring and it's lame. It's very overrated. There's nothing happening. Yeah, it fucking sucks. The remake is actually decent. Never seen it. The old one. It still sucks, but it's better than that one. Um, 
a newer movie that's actually really good that you like, surprisingly, uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. That's Canadian? It is. I do like that movie. That's I good. saw it on uh, Netflix. Here's a here's a perfect example of what you were talking Excuse about. Excuse me, it was on Hulu. I apologize. Uh, I hate Netflix. A complete, utter turd. Okay. Uh, Lost After Dark. I, I can't do I can't do that movie. I can't do It Follows. I can't I can't do, you know, The Quiet Place. You know what The Quiet Place is when I shit? <laughs> it looks like science. I don't understand why that it looks like a creature feature to me. I don't know much about it, but whatever. So give me some more Canadian stuff. We'll see. Now, look, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm going to eat my own shit here. Hold on a second. I'm going to have to apologize. Technically, even though it's American-funded, Silent Night, Deadly Night was shot in Canada. I love that movie. Yeah, it is. But whatever. I don't give a fuck. It was an American film. It, it, it was shot in America by an American director, so I don't fucking care. Whatever. That's a technicality. Yeah, Stargate was really developed. Stargate the TV show was developed in fucking California by Dom DeLuise's son, Peter DeLuise. But it was shot in Canada. That doesn't mean anything. I mean, I'm from Canada. You know, whatever. I just don't like Can- uh, the majority of Canadian horror films to me. I think right. they're fucking boring. Give, give me some more. I'm sorry, I'm in a row. Canadian. I don't know what um, the fuck that is. Oh, I just I was. Oh, you're Canada. okay. Um, I don't know what. These Trash are. in my homeland here, kids. Tune in. I think that's it. I just I can't. I did. I just. There's a shitload of stuff on like Code Red. It's like sorority teacher murder and all this dumb bullshit. <laughs> a lot of vinegar syndrome bullshit they put out. These just terrible slasher movies like Student Blood. <laughs> it's just all these just predictable, horrible. And you can tell that it's shot up north. And and it, um, it, it's a deal breaker for me on a lot of stuff. And I'm, I, I, you know, I was talking with somebody the other day, and we were talking about horror movies and. I've got to say, the Sleepaway Camp movies fucking suck. Those movies fucking suck. Oh, it's really bad. I'm sorry. And that bitch never came on our podcast, so fuck her too. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm i sorry. Those movies fucking suck. They're fucking garbage. She did come on our Will, podcast. Wheelchair fight. Well, I didn't. She didn't come on and talk to me. Remember, she was supposed to come on and talk to both of us. Yeah. So fuck her. Whatever. Dr. West don't like her. I just, <laughs> I just don't want to... I just don't... I don't like those movies. I think they're fucking stupid. Like, I wheelchair fuckers always saying how good they are I'm like these movies are fucking garbage they're like fucking they're supposed to be garbage it's like National ass. Lampoon Sleepaway Camp <laughs> and I don't mean like first run National Lampoon stuff I mean like the Rise of Taj National Lampoons yeah you know dog shit it's just bad it is I don't I just don't uh, I just don't I don't do that stuff man like a lot of people I know a lot of people say, oh, it's weird, nobody's ever heard of it. It's like, well, if you want to sp- sp- drop $25 on a movie that's not worth shit to me, I, you know, teach their own, but I'm just not interested in stuff like that. I don't know. I just don't. It's just not my thing. Yeah. Any, any, so anything essentially on Code Red, I'm not going to buy. You know, I'm just not interested in it. I'm not interested in the stuff y'all put out. It's too much like just, and it is. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Code Red is actually a Canadian company. But all, all their releases are limited, and it's, and it's always some kind of like, you know, sorority, murderer, killer, drive drive near it, killer. It's just, <laughs> and they're all the same. Like, I just don't, student murderer. Well, let's see what they got. Let's, let's, uh... That piece of shit with Clint Howard in it, that's a Canadian film that Scream Factory put out. I hate that fucking movie. Evil Speak? That movie fucking sucks. <laughs> It is. It's a Canadian piece of shit. Tell me it's not. I swear to God it. I know it is. It was, it's really good, man. It's really, you'd really like it. Well, Let's apparently... You, code Red DVD. You know, just... It sounds cliche, but just give me Jason Voorhees throwing somebody through a goddamn window. Let's you know? I'm, 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 I'm meeting potatoes on this stuff, kids. You know? Nail Gun Massacre. There's your another anomaly. Do I like that movie? Yes, I do. Did I think... No, it was Canadian? No, I did not, so... There, I'll eat yeah. it. I'll eat it on that one too. Yeah, there's a uh, evil queef. What else we got? That movie's terrible. I love, I love, Clint Howard, but that's oh, it's just bad. It's bad. I just don't. I don't recommend people spending their money on it. You want to steal it off Pirate Bay? Go for it. I actually have Voices from Beyond. That's a Fulci film. Don't know if it's turd or not. Um, we'll see. I'm trying to pull up. Some stuff. Look, and of course, the, the, you got your house names. I love David Cronenberg. Do I love everything he's done? No, but I'm a fan, you know. 
And I'm not saying his work is turd. I'm not saying nothing out of Canada is a turd. I don't think I'm a turd, but <laughs> you know, but it's, I don't know. I just don't, uh, I just don't care for their, and their films to me look, they look Canadian too. Like they try to make them look all Americanized and it's, you can tell it's, it's brotherhood in, of death. I don't know what that is, but black Klansman, that's something I actually want to buy. <laughs> And here's another one. Let's just let's just stop with this right here. Anything on magnet? No thanks. I'm good. I've noticed anytime he's I see. That, I'm good. It's like eh. I'm good. You can keep your Shogun Warrior Ninja movies and your fucking, you know. I mean, I, I realize the Tucker Dale thing was on magnet. Whatever. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna have anomalies to this discussion, but I just hell, I think Magnet is actually a Canadian company. Who knows? <clears throat> they also put out Don Coscarelli's worst film. What's that? That fucking... Oh, John Dies at the That end. movie's fucking awful. I hate that movie. Well, here you go. Here's one that I kept... He needs seeing. to be hit in the face with it, with my dick for making that movie. <laughs> here's one. It's such a hipster piece of shit. It is. Uh, here's, a, here's a title that I think you'll remember. This is one of the code red ones. Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker. Oh, God. I'm sorry. You know, and it's like if you're listening to this and you grew up on these films at like in a Canadian video store, God, God bless you, whatever. But I just... For me... You want to save some money? <clears throat> I won't watch anything. I'm really picky about the horror that I like. <clears throat> I'm very picky about you know, most of the stuff I like, but especially death metal and horror. Like to me, there's too much crap out there to waste your time. Don't go in the woods. I bought that piece of shit. <laughs> You shouldn't have went to the woods. <laughs> I bought that piece of shit for like five ninety five. It's fucking awful. It's awful. That movie's terrible. And then there's also Don't Go Into the Forest. Oh, God. Or there's... I'm saying it's all the same stuff, and it's like these really bad, poorly made <clears throat> slashers. I know it's not, but <clears throat> a lot of... It's just a lot of stuff like that. I just don't like the way... I don't like the way it looks. It's not even a B movie. It's like a C movie. Yeah, it looks like I made it with my iPhone. And it ends a lot of... I hate to say this. I hate to just call these companies on them and it's a lot of the crap that vinegar syndrome puts out so this is this garbage it's like i don't want your lousy ass canadian titles <laughs> that code red passed on you know just not a fan you know i just don't you, know, you get something that's just so low budget to the point where it's just not even a good film yeah you know i i guess they they, and teach their they, own, they whatever, if you want to watch, if you're, if you're that hungry to watch every horror movie made, God bless you, but I just, <laughs> just doesn't interest me. I'd rather watch the stuff I love over and over again. I, or something new like this, when I know it's something I'm probably going to like, because this is, this guy directed the church. Of course, I'm going to probably like stage fright, you know? And I'm pretty sure I saw this back in the day, VHS. We had a pretty killer video store <clears throat> in Fort Lauderdale I used to go to, but... But yeah, I mean, it was a mom and pop one too. It was amazing. It was right beside the little deli. It was fucking awesome. You used to go in there and get stuff. Look like something out of Kevin Smith's Clerks or whatever. That's uh, awesome. Um, but yeah, just not my thing, you know. Horror movies all day long. I just don't generally prefer anything that's in that in that lifeline. I just don't. Yeah, they're mainly like a. Pull up Code Red titles. I mean, I'm telling you, most of that stuff. Oh, that's is... what I've been trying to find on this. <sighs> oh. um, they did put out The Undertaker. I thought... Was I right about Evil Speak? Is it not Canadian? No, it is. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. The Unseen. I mean, that I even... movie... That movie's okay. The Unseen. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, most of the stuff I just saw is just kind of... They're big <clears throat> in exploitation... Which I'm not a huge fan of. It. I mean, I get it, but... They must shoot for like only one month a year or two to make it look all summery when it's like snowing up there. I don't know. It's weird. But... <laughs> I don't know. They, uh... Not big in exploitation, but I get it. You know, I'm just not going to buy all these exploitation No, films, no, of course not. And why would you, you know? Yeah, I mean, I like Blackula and Blackula Screams again. Those are great. Um, yeah, but they're not I... Canadian. Nope. You know, and here comes the owl killer. There's a there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, Severn put out Blackenstein, I think. There you go. The movie's awful. <laughs> it really is. It's terrible. And then there's that. I don't remember who put this out. They, that Black Devil Doll movie. Oh God, I forget who put that out. 
It's like bleh, you know, and bleh, I get and I get it. I think I think there's a certain when you're going beyond the video store, you know, aisle from my childhood. I can't really, I can't facet putting forty, fifty, thirty dollars into a film. I just can't do it. I'd rather buy a fucking yeah. T-shirt. Want to get some extra, like swag with it. But yeah, I just <clears throat> there's there's a lot of stuff I think. Uh, you know, just just because you put limited edition on it to me doesn't mean I'm going to buy it. Well, that's awesome. We got a hanging body here on set. So I gotta say, I dig the set for this. Uh, you know what's an awful movie with a similar premise to this? And I want to I want to just tell everybody out there: if you like this movie, you deserve to hit yourself across the face with your own hand. Is a movie called The Gallows. What a piece of shit, turd! Never saw that film. That is. I it's remember these, you telling me you went. You it's wasted these money kids in a theater seeing that. As a dollar theater, but whatever. But still, it was lame. I could have bought like a McChicken with it, but anyway. <laughs> Or or a triple beef burrito, triple cheese burrito, whatever the hell that thing's called. Uh, anyway, um, it's a triple whipple. It is a true. I, <laughs> I'm working on a triple whipple tonight. But but what I was going to say is, like, you get um, there's so many uh, there's there's so much different stuff that comes out, and you know, and if if people want to intake all that stuff i just i can't that 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 gallows movie it seriously was just god awful but i'll tell you something weird about it the latest liam neeson movie that came out same same director i'm taking six no i think it's called the commuter but it's it's basically yeah but it's great like i really liked it like i want to buy that movie like i really liked it and it's the same director some kid so Cheers to you, buddy, for not giving up, and you impressed me with a movie. So even though it's not really horror, it's more like a suspense thing. But sure, it was still really good. And you had the uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren actors playing uh, as catalysts in that film. Vera Farmiga and mm-hmm. Patrick Wilson. Wilson. Yep. yep. Huge Lightning fan. Go Lightning. Hope you win the whole thing. Fuck the New Jersey Devils. Fuck the Boston Bruins. That's who we're supposed to play next. Either them or Toronto. Go fuck yourself. Well, and, and my what I'm thinking is you guys want Toronto because of last year, right? We haven't been eliminated by Boston since 2011. Well, Toronto and the Penguins fucked. Toronto, last fu- year. if that's what you're talking about, yes, that's Tor- what I mean. Toronto, Essentially, completely. You guys want to just do, have the satisfaction of. We'll see if they can get back in it. I don't think they're going to beat them, though. And we're going to have a lot of trouble with them. They're fucking annoying. But we've got home ice, so, you know, we flush the devils. Probably be Boston, honestly. I mean, that's that's what it's shaping up to be, which I think is fucking annoying. I hate that fucking team anyway. I don't like either one of them, but, yeah, whatever. But, um... So the brief hockey talk, Phantasm Podcast. Yeah, just real quick. (laughs) It goes hand in hand, you know. But I think, um... And I'm pretty excited about this. I think uh I think that the, the, the Carpenter movies that Scream Factory are putting out are probably my favorite things I'm looking forward to getting. Yeah, they look the the, the you know, they re released stuff on the Steelbooks I thought was a, a great idea. And then putting out uh In the Mouth of Madness, I mean, awesome. Something and it's a Warner have. Brothers title, too, yeah. which I can't... So is uh, Memoirs of an Invisible Man, which if you yeah. guys have never seen that, I'm a huge Chevy Chase fan, so to, <clears throat> to have Chevy work with my favorite horror director, it's like, it's a dream come true. It's bread and butter. It is. It really is. It's good stuff. Um, but... <clears throat> now, I want to ask you something, because I just bought this. So, have you watched Deep Red? Not yet. Oh, You haven't, or you have? No, I haven't yet. I've been waiting on it. Why is it going for fifty goddamn dollars? I mean, it's pretty. Pale. Did you spend fifty dollars on it? No, I spent thirty nine. It's going for fifty bucks. That's why you buy and shit this, right when it comes out. This asshole because it goes up like a. I want to show you this asshole. I, I bought that uh, Killer Clowns, and it's seventeen ninety nine. I got it for seventeen. And yours was too. sixteen. You know, yeah, sixteen. Essentially seventeen bucks too. But you wait a week, that shit's going to jack the fuck up, and it's going to be twenty five dollars. See, this is what I don't understand. I want to show you this. But Amazon does the same thing as, uh, you know, FYE or Best Buy or any of those places. They just jack Look at this. Now, this guy week. says, 
it says right it says uh or best offer right right and this is brand new I offered him 30 bucks for it and he declined it well, he's a jack off I mean it's it goddamn is... opened yeah. I'm not paying you fucking 40 dollars for something that's open I can get it new for that on here well, people that do those auction things, they always want more than they pay. He can go something. fuck himself. It's like, go sell it to fucking, go sell it to your local bookstore and get $3 for it. Because you're not going to get shit out of me. I'm not paying you fucking. Offered the guy 30 bucks. He wanted 44 It's like, dude, don't, don't, my, my, here's my thing with it. If you want $40 for it, then don't put a thing to give someone an option to do that. Anybody out there listening, if you get on eBay and you put the make an offer thing and you're not willing to negotiate on it, then don't put that on there. It's like, what are you going to do, 38? Like, well, I mean, I don't understand that. What do you, why do you have a negotiating, negotiating piece if you're not willing to negotiate for it? It's fucking retarded. People want more than they paid for stuff. So but it's ridiculous. It's like, why do you have a make an make me an offer thing if you're not willing to make someone? And immediately it's just like, no. It's like you've already lost money. You might as well not. And the computer did it. He yeah. must have it set up with something because it immediately rejected me. Which normally, when you make an offer to somebody that's actually legitimately they interested have like in a that, they cap on it. So that's if bullshit. It, if it hits the right one, it'll do it. That's complete fucking bullshit. There we go. Somebody's being choked, like takes Manhattan style right now through the the vent here. Ooh. And there's a severed head. There's all kinds of shit going on. Oh yeah. Let's get some drilling action. Nice. Got some flesh rippage impale. This movie's actually fantastic so far. Sorry, we've been just shooting the shit over this, but it is a good Got movie. Patrick coming from Pestilence, which is an honor to me. I'm a huge fan. Um, he really kind of, in the interview when you listen to it, he kind of downplays how important the band is. I think they're very important, especially if you're a fan of the progressive and technical death metal, because to me, uh, Spheres is probably one of the first technical death metal albums I ever heard. And I think they're doing both the California and the Quebec Death Fest. I'm not sure, but I know they got some shows. I think that's up. right. Yeah. So if it's if you guys are in uh, Canada or travel to Canada or to uh, California, USA, and uh, hit up your boys Pestilence because they're they're doing some shows this year. So definitely catch them whenever and wherever you can and afford to go out to. Be worth all the money in the world. Just go go check them out. Yeah, he's a really great guy. You know, he was very nice and. Any time that I can reach out to somebody and they be nice to me, and they're not a fucking you know wick prick about doing something, you know, because you know Corey and I spend hours and hours and days and hours and days and months and years trying to get some of this stuff, and some people are very compliant with it, and, and some for the most part, it is. It's very rare we get the the. I don't know. We've had some resistant assholes over the past few years. Yeah, it's our anniversary end, month. I don't know what end that's coming from, but you know. Um, well, I mean, my my thing about it is, is I don't want anybody on that doesn't want to do it, and we've seen what happens when when people yep. are on it anyway, and that never goes well. So, by all means, say no if you if you don't want to. There's nothing saying you have to. This is free enterprise, and we do it as fans, and we do it for fans, and uh, you know we're. We're consumers of this shit. We buy all this stuff, and we we go out to the shows. We go out to the conventions. I mean, we, indeed, we're all over the place. So, I mean, after we're out of the studio, we don't stop being fans. And uh, I mean, we're fans right now. We're watching a fucking movie, talking about death metal. That's what we do. I think people you know? get the wrong idea with it. But the, the the honest, the truth of the matter is, is this: is it's still it's happened to you. It's happened to me. You put too much. You put a lot of effort into it for someone to act like that. And honestly, there's not. The biggest people we've had on here were honestly probably the most humble. Yeah. So, but to, you know, I'll... to me, to me to have some has been in a band that's worshipped by less than a hundred thousand people, I shouldn't have to take an attitude from them when I'm trying to do them a fucking favor. So, right, it's you know, be a little nicer. When we ask you, you know, you don't want to do it. Just just say that, like what Corey said, you know. But don't be a fucking wick prick about it. <laughs> you don't have to be a bastard about it because. You know, nobody's buying your records anymore, I hate to tell you. You know, if you're living in 2018, you're not selling records, so... Right. No, but nobody's selling records anymore, so... And plus, I don't mean to brag, but I feel like we have had more guests consistently on such podcasts than, than anybody. I mean, I don't see... Well, we have, and we've had... we Look, I'll say this. 
other Just, than I mean, we, other than like five people, all of our guests have been very awesome, and we've been very blessed to have them on. Uh, and don't get me wrong about that, but I'm just saying to the ones that, you know, were difficult about things, it's like, you know, I don't, and I'm just going to go ahead and say this, I'm like, fuck corrosion of conformity. Like I never wanted that fucking band on this podcast anyway. Like fuck that band. Like I just don't like them. I don't listen to fucking stoner dog shit crap metal anyway. <laughs> like I don't, you know, I listen to fucking death metal and Occasionally we go outside the box with that, but the majority of it's death metal. And most, 90% of those guys have been fucking awesome, like Patrick. And I thank him for his time and his patience with me. And John McNee, who we'll have for you later uh, from Incantation, what a fucking awesome dude he was, you know. So, you know, it's it's nice. Uh, Steve Tucker, I had an amazing interview with recently. You guys can look forward to that. It was fucking better than the one I did the first time. And it's just a fantastic interview and he was very nice and very with it and very on that day. He was very poetic, if you will. So, you know, I, I can't complain. I think we've been blessed. I think we've been very lucky to have the stuff we have, but the people that have acted out, you know, there's just no reason for it. It's ridiculous. And uh-huh. if you, if, if you don't want to do it, then you shouldn't have agreed to do it in the first place. And when you're made to do it by your label, you need to just suck it up and do it. I mean, a lot of people are working at crystal. You could be nice enough to, you know, <laughs> to just do the interview and be, and be thankful that someone wants to talk to you because to, to sit and, you know, give me attitude when you're, you know, just some guy in a death metal band. It's like, give me a break, you know? And like I said, for the most part, that hasn't happened. I've been, we, you and I collectively, I think together have been, have been very lucky. Um, but, the ones that have sucked, like Joanna Mann and you know, <laughs> Bill Robinson, they're just, they're ridiculous. There was no reason for those people to act that way, you know. They should have just never done it. Yeah, they should have just walked off, you know. I would have had a, you know, a few minute interview with whoever else wanted to do it or ask around and then I'd have left and that'd been it, you know. But, you know. Well, the Owl Man just got uh, hacked up, so. That will happen. Anyway, some negative stuff, but we keep it positive here. 2018, I'm keeping it positive. I'm keeping it real. And, uh, Ooh, they put the mask on him. Corey and I try to keep it real for you guys. Always keeping it real. Oh, they killed Brett. Good job. I'll tell you an interesting thing. <clears throat> That's who everyone thought was the killer, and it's not. She's fucking hot. I just want to bend her over. <clears throat> There's the killer. He's already looking up that skirt. Oh no, Sybil. But I think if you, <clears throat> you know, if you, uh, you search yourself for creativity and, and things that you want to do and, and you believe in what you're doing, I think you can, you know, reach out and do anything. I think we collectively together, to speak for both of us, I think have been extremely lucky, but yeah, you know. Some people are very gracious, and I thank all those people, and they make Corey and I happy, and they make doing this, and you guys listening out there, and anyone in the world listening to us right now, it immortalizes Corey and I both, and we appreciate it, and we appreciate your support, and, you know, that's all we can do is just keep trying. But sometimes, man, it's rough. <clears throat> you know, if Corey's girlfriend's fussing at him, or mine's fussing at me, and we're all, or excuse me, Corey's fiance, or my girlfriend's fussing at me, and we're trying to you know, get interviews too, and you got work going on, and Corey works six days a week. It's rough sometimes. Oh, it's rough. Chainsaw dismemberment, baby. That yep. was beautiful. Holy shit. That is you know, nice. you wonder if you're ever going to get a motive for the owl killer, you know? Like, what's his motive? That chick there looks like she just got out of makeup. Yeah. Like, right off the trailer. Hurry, come in here after we kill this girl on the floor. <clears throat> I'm going to do the ultimate uh, Peter, Peter, wait for me. It's like I'm all sweaty with my man bangs. I think he was the red spandex from earlier. Yep. When you're watching this film, you get an unpleasant shot of his package straight out the gate. Well, a little chainsaw. We got chainsaws nice. and axes. We got everything going on. Oh, he's got Ita- cut right in the boot. Italian horror film. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, they pull weapons out of fucking nowhere. You wonder where they get the idea of some of these Saw movies. Oh, there's a tit. That's good. First time we've seen him, I'm surprised with an Italian horror film. It's, you know, we're an hour in. Did you ever watch Jigsaw? Tits. No, I didn't. I really like that movie. 
It is good. Yeah, I really liked it. I've heard mixed things, so I'd have to watch it. <laughs> oh, liked... arm cut off. I, oh, enjoy, yes. I enjoyed it. I didn't think he was going to get the full one. Oh. For a modern film, I liked it. Ran out of gas, buddy. I think if you like the other films, you'll like it. Oh! Teed off. His head is gone. The killer's head? No, the, that... Uh, whatever that guy's name is. Red Spandex. Red Spandex Package. He's... He has left the building. So, yeah, he's he's done. Jesus, that was visceral. So this has gotten really good near the end here. So I'm wondering where that chick went and got cut in the boob. She's still around somewhere. And we got the uh, an hell fucking owl. yes. Nice. And uh, <clears throat> John Carpenter's son added me on Facebook. I'm very happy. Thank you, Cody, for that. Woohoo! And props to all the live shit you've been doing, the live shows. Maybe we can get him on now. Yeah, it'd be cool. Um, but I, I want to tell somebody, everybody listening this real quick. It's a real quick little thing. When I say that I like John Carpenter, I mean, I'm talking about over all of it over any other filmmaker like not just any like he's my favorite filmmaker period yeah he's amazing um so uh yeah for me um that's that's the bar you know you got George Romero you got Stephen King other people that I'm really into um David Cronenberg Clive Barker um, I'm Lynch. excited that you're meeting him. I, I I'm gonna just live through you through that. I I'm a huge fan of his. I I just really love him, man. I'm a, I'm a really big fan, and I, I don't know if I ever told you this. About <clears throat> a year ago, I bought one of his paintings from him. That's awesome. It was only like 150 bucks. He actually has an exclusive print that he made for Texas Frightmare. It's really cool. Um, they're probably out by now. I don't know. There wasn't a lot of prints of it, but um. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. I'm going to have a killer time. I'm, it's been a long time since I've been to a convention. You're going to the convention from what I hear. Even though, um, well, no, it's only been since, since October somehow. That, that's the last convention I went to. It's crazy. It feels like it's been a fucking year. Um, but yeah, Texas Frightmare is supposed to be uh, one of the most fun, and that's coming from the likes of like Kane Hodder and and some other some other peeps I've, I've heard talk about the convention, so... Um, they all say it's it's a really, really good time, so that's what I'm looking forward to. Hurting. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a convention that's been too long. So I like to keep them up, you know. Um, at least once a year. You know, we got Indy coming up after that, Days of the Dead, uh, next month. That's going to be really Are fun. you going to that too? Yep. That's uh, the Dream Warriors, Cast Reunion, um, Everybody but Freddie. Freddie's been, you know, Robert England's been doing a lot of other conventions around it. Different circuit. Yeah. So, um, but you got all the guys, you know, the cats from Dream Warriors, like the actual Dream Warriors and Heather Loggenkamp, which is awesome. And then, uh, you know, we got all that stuff coming up. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, Mrs. Gore Christ and I, that's really our escape, is to just, uh, be amongst fellow horror fans and you know all the people that dress up and uh, you see you know you got the costume contest so it's really really cool seeing some of the crazy costumes you know everybody tries real hard and so you know most people just do it for fun anyway just the the level of uh, creativity and time and effort that goes into creating some of these costumes I've seen are pretty nuts um can't even fathom how some of these people take the time and do all this while working a regular job and all, you know having a normal life and all this stuff. So, um, really cool when you see some of the bigger costumes where people go all out, and you'll see a lot of Jason Voorhees, you'll see a lot of Michael Myers. Uh, not too much in the costume contest, but you definitely see you know a lot of the kids that do the conventions are pretty funny too. Um, oh, and here you see uh, what happened to to Titslit. 
Looks like she's uh, not having a good day. I think she's... Tit slip? Tit slip. Tit slip. Who's that? The chick in the bathroom. <clears throat> tit slip. I think it's... Uh, oh, tit slip. Yeah, tit slip. Here comes the killer. He's an owl guy. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna mess with this whole thing. Imagine this killer's mask is Tootie's head. God damn. Not actually his head, but it's just a makeup, you know. That's fine. It's supposed to look like his head. Right. And it's just like, Tootie. Tootie, tootie, Which is tootie. funny. It is funny. <clears throat> For y'all listening, that's Corey's dog. Anyway, um, but yeah, I think, I think you're gonna have fun at that. I mean, I don't know how you couldn't. There's so many great guests. <laughs> he just presses um, his face up on the. <laughs> fuck Norman Bates. That's way scarier. Yeah, it's a pretty big owl mask. It's. Uh... I don't mean that literally. I actually love. I actually wanted to talk about that. I just watched Psycho Two. The other day, and I watched Psycho Three. I love those movies, man. There goes the butcher knife. Speaking I'm a big of, Psycho uh, fan. Speaking of Psycho, I feel like this is a small ode to it. With the uh, agreed, going in the shower and getting the butcher knife as <coughs> as the kill. Sure, man. Nice. There's a lot of gore and uh, <coughs> a lot of innards. Big fan. A lot I'm of innards love in it. that uh, shower. There, that's really nice. Um. Yeah, this this film took it to a whole new level. This is some serious gore for the uh, small scenes of it. There's a lot of it in, in very small doses. It's nice, and this I was hoping this picks up pretty quick. It hasn't. It's been a million miles an hour the whole time with the pace of it. So not a lot of downtime. A lot of dead time. There's a lot of kills in this movie. It's got a pretty pretty uh, good body count, and all the kills are memorable in this movie. You saw. Um, dude getting cut in half with a chainsaw, uh, which he got his arm cut off before that, and then he got his he gets his fucking head cut off. Another guy, um, you got the you know the pickaxe to the mouth, and you got a nice stabbing kill. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in this. There was a drill that killed that one dude that came through the fucking door. That was pretty beautiful. So there's a a nice arsenal in this movie with uh with tools of the trade here. We saw a chainsaw, we saw a, like a drill, and there was a butcher knife, there was a pickaxe. Um, am I forgetting something? There's actual hands involved. So there's some good shit in here. Looking at my medical bag for something. Another one I don't see too much in horror movies and we did at Maniac was like guns. I mean, as... I guess they really try not to use that stuff. Like, you know, getting away with having that. I never really thought of it that way, but... Um, what are you talking about? Like, as, like, a weapon. They don't really... None of the killers in any of these movies. I guess it's not interesting to... Well, I mean, I think... Use, I think, like, a gun, but it's also... And correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you're more... Um, prone to getting shot than you are getting stabbed by somebody. But, you know, it depends on what side of town you're in. But, um... I think it's a lot more memorable for somebody to, in these movies anyway, in cinema, to, to die by some sort of a steel or, you know, weapon. Um, I think that's very true. Versus, like, a gun. The only memorable one would be, you know, the maniac kill, Tom Savini's head explosion. Um, we'll have Tom on for you later this year, hopefully, too. I'm working on that now. <clears throat> yeah, that'll be awesome. Um <laughs> I'm going to have him... Uh, I'm going to try round three of uh, talking to him at Frightmare. So we'll you, are goes. you really? Well, yeah, he'll be there. Um, well, for God's sakes, don't... Well, you could... Well, I wouldn't bring that up. I'm not going to say anything to him. He won't remember any of that. Um, no, I meant about me asking him to come on. Though. Oh, yeah, no. But I'll just, you know... Just let him do it. He's really busy. It's always sad. Yeah. He'll come on in May. I was like, all right. He just did, uh, I think it was Monster Palooza... And God, there was some amazing guests at that. Rick Baker was there. Rick uh, wasn't at that. Yeah, he was. He was there. He was there. Well, all the stuff I saw, he wasn't there. He was there. I saw pictures. That's weird, because it was a was tribute there. to him, but I never yeah. saw he was actually there. I don't think he was there signing stuff, or he was like... He was just he was on stage or yeah. something. I mean, oh, yeah. okay, because I was about to say, I'm pretty sure he wasn't. Yeah, he was a part of something because I saw people with you know pictures of him, like me and Rick Baker. You know, it's pretty awesome. Um, uh, like, and I'll go to hell. I've been to Rick Baker right. since <laughs> I was uh, like seven years old. 
Greg Nicotero was there, and Savini, of course, and, you know, it was just really cool. There's a lot of, you know, best-in-the-business uh, artists right there, so. It's good shit. I would love to go to one of those, or like a... That's crazy that they had Nicotero at that, because he doesn't even do those Walker Stalker things. Well, they had made, like, a bunch of stuff, too, like, uh, these big, like, you know, monster things. Like, they had a few of them that they actually all made, and they were displaying them. But do you know what I mean? Like, they didn't have... He doesn't even go to those Walker Stalker things. Right. People probably don't know who the fuck he is, even though they watch that show, but... Yeah. I don't know. But it looked pretty fun. Um, you know, do Texas this year, and we'll see how, how it all goes. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll Speaking like of which, to... all the Wishmaster movies are on Hulu right now for everybody listening out there. Nice. If you don't have the uh, Vestron, then uh, catch it on Hulu. And from what I've read, speaking of Vestron, that line's going to go in the toilet this year. You think so? That's the way I read it. Why Why is that? It's not selling. Their price point's too high, and Fox isn't happy with the numbers on it, so they're going to shit can it. Well, yeah, they were selling stuff for like 40 bucks for like... They still, are. They, they still are. That's a p- preposterous. They yeah. still are. I mean, Chopping spent, Mall was like they sp- $40, they but sp- at least Chopping Mall had a high demand for that film to come out on Blu-ray. Like, well, they're doing it with all, every title that they have, you know. Yeah, and, and you can't do that. Well, they, the way I've read it is it's probably not going to survive after this year. Which sucks, you know. It's a really, really cool line. But it's you, a great line. You can tell that they started putting out some... Uh, not so great ones, just kind of oddball ones. I mean, I like all the stuff they put out, but it's just, you know, when you've got catalog titles like Dead Alive and The Wraith that you haven't released sure. in that line, which doesn't make any fucking sense to me. And Near Dark, they own that too. Yeah. I mean, there's just some stupid shit that they haven't put out. I just don't understand. And then instead we get Reanimator 5 and fucking whatever <laughs> that other goddamn movie is. It's like, it's fine, I'll buy them. I've bought every title they've put out. Look at uh I just don't understand it. The owl here. He's got all the bodies on the stage. This is morbid as shit. This reminds me of Mortuary. A uh, similar ending to it. But he's got like all the victims are just... It's pretty uh, morbid. This is actually more morbid than the... Uh, the ending to Mortuary. Because instead of, you know... The bride and like the family. This is just like the... Cast of some play, and then he just killed everybody. Wonder if it's the director. That's what I was thinking. We don't know who. What else? But there's still one left. He's just putting owl feathers in her mouth. I mean, this guy's just. I mean, I don't know. I'm not getting his vision for this. I don't think he knows what it is either. <laughs> <clears throat> Drugs. <laughs> yeah, he must be on some crazy shit. There's a red spandex his head. Yep. Which I'm hoping he's going to punish. This looks like something Jack Torrance would see in The Shining. Yeah, a little bit. Except there'd be like a bear, a guy in a bear costume. Did you see where Sean Clark was posting pictures? He's like, me with the real Jack Torrance. And it's that yeah, Stephen cool. Weber guy. Yeah. See, I didn't like, I think that movie sucks. Oh, is that the, the TV movie? Yeah, it's a piece of shit. Yeah, I don't. I'm sorry, I don't care if Stephen King likes it or not. That TV movie was a piece of shit. It's certainly not a Stanley Kubrick nope, movie. Nope, it is not. You guys ever doubt me on these things? Watch The Shining theatrically. It will make a believer of you. Yeah, that was one it's of the best things I've ever seen. It's a completely different experience. But that movie... And I think Stephen King just doesn't like it. I think he actually secretly likes it. I, I think know, he's just I think his, he's just butthurt. This guy's got his little cat in his armchair, and he's just chilling with some bodies. It's pretty funny. And this bitch is gonna straight up try to shoot his ass or get this key. I don't know what she's doing. The sky's the limit right now. I mean, I would have just already just left. I don't know what she's fucking doing. My guess is that key is her only way out. So she's got to fucking shoot this fucking bastard. Well, the cat's name is Lucifer. That's pretty amazing. With his little cat, Lucifer. And he mews. What are you going to do, bitch? You got to do something. Yep. What you going to do? You're out of options, dear. Either shit or go off the pot. I mean, I don't know. 
I, I just don't. Got to figure something out quick. He's only going to be chilling in his little chair for so long. I'm surprised he didn't realize he left one out. Maybe his, uh, his mannequins confused him a little bit. It's a pretty nice display, though, of, uh, of carnage here. It's almost like he's like a Conan type character where he's just like basking in his glory of all the bodies. I think it's really cool. This is pretty pimp. What a what a character. I think the this owl killer is pretty unique. I actually thoroughly enjoy this this ending. It's pretty nice. I mean, honestly, if I was a a, a deranged killer in a in a horror movie, I would want to be a guy that's just kind of at the end of it, sitting in a chair and taking a breather after, uh, and just leaving all my bodies nicely propped up and displayed like they're my toys, you know. That's pretty, that's pretty crazy. A lot of fun. This movie's really, really nice. And it's out of print. Yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is on that. It's blue underground. This stuff's hard to find as it is. I mean, buy it off eBay or True. local used bookstore you can probably find it this guy's gonna see the key the cat's gonna fuck it up for everybody come on Lucifer god damn here goes Lucifer he's gonna make the owl notice what the fuck's going on <coughs> yeah throw him some catnip and get him the fuck out of there Nope, here he goes. He's like, who took my key? Why is my cat angry? I also like how there's just, uh, like feathers all over the fucking place. Like, it's just very strange. <laughs> and the cat, I don't know, this is just a crazy movie. Very weird. At Corey's booth, the Phantasm booth at Texas Frightmare, you can come meet him and get a picture with him in his owl mask. <laughs> that would be awesome. Now, there's a kicker with it. For an extra hundred, he will actually take the picture nude in just the owl mask. <laughs> oh, there she goes. She's getting choked out. Nope. Ooh. His name is Irving. That's a big ass key, I'll tell you. Yeah, get out of the theater. Key earned when you stab someone in the eye. It's like a boss battle right now. Yeah. Stab him in the eye to acquire the key. God, that's fucking scary. She almost got Jack Torrance. <clears throat> so, let's see who. Irving is because I mean we're just watching this on subtitles so obviously so um, it's kind of it's easy to fall out of who's who especially in Italian horror films and she's got nice uh, a nice little rack going let's see stage fright 1987 it's certified Irving Wallace played by Clayne Parker that woman's trying to find a quiet place <laughs> Rolling Stone says a quiet place is another piece of shit horror film for 2018 but it's certified fresh Rolling Stone who thinks the White Stripes is a good band says the quiet place <laughs> is a great film it's so quiet and it's <clears throat> certified Rolling Stone, who said Luke Skywalker shouldn't have came back in that film unless he'd done more stuff, says A Quiet Place is amazing. <laughs> I've been told it's really good, but I don't know. I just I have trouble believing that. Will I see it? Of course it? we're in maybe we're in the age where nothing is right for anybody politically and everything needs to be corrected, but then somehow every film that ever comes out is the most amazing thing that's ever happened. So Ooh. He got fucking shot in the mouth. 
No, there he goes. No, oh man. But you know what I mean? Like, politically everything's wrong, which, you know, there's a lot of a lot of that anyway. Oh, shit. Eee! He's about to get the... Oh, oh he's no. getting the Indiana Jones here. Well, there he goes. Look at that. You're getting a good entrance here. Just oh, jump off. Well, he you're can survive that. You're not that, that far. Yeah. Your fucking mask will break your fall anyway. Sling to the couch. Sling to the couch. I don't think he's that far down. Look, he's got he? a table to break. He oh, can... he's trying to come back up. Yeah, this guy doesn't give two shits. I have to say the killer in this is pretty entertaining. Yeah, he's just fucking. Crazy. And this print looks better than like a modern Marvel Disney movie. Yeah, it looks really good. There you go. Cut that. Cut that bitch. That was a terrible cut of the actual editing wise. That was a terrible cut. I mean, she totally botched it. <clears throat> there you go. Well, there goes your nice watch. Sorry about it. See, he should have just jumped down. And now he's going to be up higher and break his fucking back. Unless he's an actual owl and he can fly. Let's see if that happens. This week on Phantasm. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Unless he's wearing a football helmet. <laughs> God damn. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Hawking. Is that too much? Too soon? Probably. A Quiet Place is an old fact. This is from Jeanette Katsoulis of the New York Times. A Quiet Place made her pussy wet. A Quiet Place. It tiptoes forward, camera fixed on the naked, a quiet pailing place. feet of the Abbott family. That's too much. I just want Starring to Dwayne the Rub Johnson, a Vince <laughs> McMahon production. It's an old-fashioned creature feature with a single simple hook. The Am I the only person that's tired of seeing him in every film that comes out? The creatures are Everybody's blind. like, have you Wait seen it. Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle? It's fucking awesome, man. I'm it's like, god scenario. damn. I've never heard this scenario. An old-fashioned creature feature with a single simple hook. The creatures are blind, hungry, and navigate by sound. That just sounds... A quiet place. It just sounds dumb. A film by Vince McMahon. This gripping, clever monster movie is one of those rare genre treats that seizes on a simple, unique idea and executes it so perfectly and concisely that it elicits satisfying squeals of delight. An intriguing premise makes Quiet Place an essential horror flick because of its understanding of the genre and the cast that absorbs you into a terrifying world. It just looks like signs to me. And I've talked to people about it. It's like, okay, is this like a signs ripoff? Because if we're living in an age of people being inspired by uh, M. Night Shyamalan and uh, Shyamalaya, Shyamalala. And if that's the age we're living in where people are making movies based off of his movies, then I'm kind of done with new movies. I'm just going to keep watching this stuff. Rolling Stone says, the White Stripes are the best band ever. Watch A Quiet Place. <laughs> You know, I I take nothing that Rolling Stone says ever as anything worth shit. Yeah, I never have really. So, and I'll I'll say this, and I'll prove my point with it with metal. On their greatest metal albums of all time, the fact that they have every Metallica record above P sells, but who's buying tells me they know jack shit about music. Right. Oh, yeah, they don't. They don't now, you want to be competitive with it, that's fine. You drop stuff down. But when you have the Black Album and Injustice for All, which I think are commercial pieces of shit, and you've got that above Peace Sales, but who's buying? I'm like, really? Okay, that guy just carried, you can see him carrying the, they saw the stretcher go by, and then they saw the guy carrying the head. <laughs> that was funny. Um, yeah, look, folks, you don't need a college degree to uh, tell me what the best metal records are, and I think that's the problem is that, these people aren't music fans. They're music analysts. Well, it wasn't even that. It's just the fact that, that they would have something like the Black Album, which is a pop record, over something that was raw when he was on cocaine and everything else, which was, in my opinion, and I'll, I'll say this till I'm dead, their best album. And the fact that they had that thing literally at like 98 or 99, I'm like, really? And pieces of shit like Alice in Chains were in that list. It's like, Alice in Chains isn't a metal band. They're a fucking grunge band. Yeah. They have no business on a fucking metal list. Yeah, that list is atrocious. I think we Soundgarden was in that list. I'm like, you know, I think we've uh, 
had that list on one of our earlier episodes where we read off the whole thing. Um, it's it just goes to show you, you know, if you want to make your own, I think people should make their own lists anyway. Um, don't Look, leave it up to the to Rolling Stone to tell you. But what, just what metal that's is my the best. that's my point though yeah. that they would have you know. Oh yeah, just, cliche thrash albums on there, they and just then, put up what sells. They don't care about. What's well, it's essential. just it's just dumb, and you get some guy playing around the internet. It's, it's there's like, popular music, and then there's essential music. Fucking retarded. Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's essential. You know. Um, no, it doesn't. Just look at Pestilence, for instance. I think an essential record, metal or death metal or not, you know, testimony of the ancients. Um, it's fucking essential death metal, really is, and so is. Um, you know, consuming impulse definitely. Um, just I mean, stuff like that. You know? Well, you know, and it, it, it's. I'm not even wasting breath on it, but it's just them saying the Quiet Place is a good movie is about as essential as the Metallica Black album. And if you like those type things, it's and, just because it's popular, and you like to, and you like to, you know, you like to hang out and you know finger your butthole and you know watch bad Netflix programming that, hey man, you know, who am I to tell you not to do that? But, <clears throat> huh. but you didn't put a bullet in that chamber. So this bitch had the safety on and thought that she shot him. So what was that all about? With the I'm not sure. Oh, there's his watch there. Now, this is going to be cool if, because I don't remember the ending of this, if the owl killer is actually just at large. That's That'd be a really cool way to end this movie. That's what they're alluding to here. They call it the Soundstage Massacre. Eight horribly mutilated bodies were found at the modern st- at the Stage Diver studio this morning. Huh. Eight? Why Eight. Donald Trump says a quiet place <laughs> entertained him to the point of food. Brett, Mark, Sybil, Danny, Peter, <sighs> Corrine, <clears throat> Ferrari. It's interesting, though, because... So who's number eight? She's a schizophrenic and she did all the killing? I don't know. There he is. Oh, they shot him in the head. Somebody did. Had to have been a cop. Nope. It's a black guy that we haven't seen the whole film. (laughs) It's an old black man. He's going to help you. Old black men are the only people that should be allowed to have beards. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Gandalf should have been a black man, not a, not oh, a, not, awesome. not a white Austrian. <laughs> it's just my opinion. That would have been pretty cool. So Allie is who's left here, right between the eyes. So she must have just like fired a blank, and the dude freaked out because I thought he straight up got shot in the face. But I, I guess not. As the movie's wrapping up, uh, be sure to stick around for the doctor's interview with Patrick Mamelli of Pestilence. Fucking A. You can the pick man. Their new record, Hadian, right now. It's been available for a little while, so don't sleep on it. If you don't have it, pick it up. They also have some reissues of their catalog. You can go pick that shit up, too. They have, yeah, the reissues are. God, I just bought them. They're, they're pretty pimp. They're so nice. They were worth every penny. They're all imports. You're going to pay a little bit more for them, but they're worth it. And they're on vinyl, too. If you guys are vinyl collectors, all of those are available on vinyl, including the new album. And then the four classic albums remastered, and it's fucking fantastic. Definitely. Well, I don't want to hit myself in the face with the mic here. That sounded fun. And, and, it was. and painful. And then now we got... Final thoughts. Great movie. Uh, from a director that I love, uh, definitely recommend this film. Uh, check out his other work, Cemetery Man, which uh, Corey loves as well, and The Church, which I'm a huge fan of. One of my favorite horror films of all time, so I highly recommend this release. Yeah, I loved it. I will say a, a weird term for it. This movie was delicious. 
It's Certified Flesh from Phantasm Podcast. I really dig it. If you guys are gore fanatics, this one has a lot of gore in it. Um, the kills aren't too spaced out, so there's a lot there. Um, very interesting killer, very interesting uh, way to end the movie. There's still a lot of speculation. It's very cool. Um like the, the arsenal that the killer had. I thought that was very unique, uh, the usage of the the tools and everything. So, very, it's a fucking good movie. It was, it was a delight. I really... Really like this film. It's very awesome. Uh, if you guys see it anywhere, it's a Blue Underground Blu-ray. Definitely pick it up. This is worth having. I'm gonna have to find a copy of this now because it's. Uh, it goes for it goes for about twenty bucks. It's not it's not, not outrageous. No. Yeah, it's, it was a pretty bitch a movie. So uh, I think the the way I read it was the 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 rights lapsed on it. Oh uh, okay. Yeah, this is a great movie. It is. It's a so. it's a fantastic film, and I got it at McGee's. Yeah, but uh. Paid a lot for it, but whatever. I don't care. It's out of print. I had to have it. When I saw the... I mean, all you have to do to sell this to me is the terrifying first film from director of The Church and Cemetery Man. Yep, that's it. Boom. And this is a great great movie. So Michelle uh, Solvay. uh, He's a fucking genius. Solvay, however you say, I love him. He's he's fantastic. And... uh, I'm a big fan. With that being said, we will leave you now with... uh, the Doctor and uh, Patrick of uh, Pestilence. Thank you, Patrick. So uh, enjoy. Thank you guys for listening. Tune in next time. Stay fucking gory. Hi, this is Dr. Vincent West with the Phantasm Podcast, and I'm here with literally one of my heroes today. We're here with Patrick from Pestilent. What's what's up, brother? Uh, not much. Hanging out. Thanks for reaching out, and uh, you know, glad that we uh, that we're able to connect, and hopefully we uh, will reach all the fans that we can, you know, answer some of the questions that I guess some of the people have been dying to find out what's up with pestilence lately. Definitely, definitely. Um, we'll, we'll jump right into this here. Um, do a uh, history of the band for me, if you don't care. I would love to let our let our audience hear hear it from you. Well, actually, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk years and, and numbers and stuff like that. But the the thing is that we started back in '86, and uh, we're a little bit behind bands like Possessed and Death that kind of started a little bit earlier. Uh, but other than that, we uh, we started in '86 and worked our way up to to now. And um, uh, well, we we had a share of failures, I guess, and uh, it's difficult to uh, you know to make it in uh, in in the death metal scene because there's uh, when we started there were so many bands you know coming from from Florida that we looked up to and. Um, but anyways, we're here, man, and uh, still enjoying what we do. Uh, what we do best. Well, it's it's really exciting. I the I believe I even told you this when I had reached out to you about doing this. The first time I saw you guys was opening for Death on the Human Tour. I believe you all were tur- uh, touring Testimony of the Ancients. Yeah, that's true, man. I thought that was uh, that was that was a huge thing for us, uh, you know, to be to be playing with that because you know we, we kind of looked up to those guys, uh, you know, way back, uh, you know, uh, in in eighty six and eighty seven. Uh, but you know, we kind of come to the conclusion that you know we wanted to compete with them and not not you know follow them because we're not followers, you know, we're just. You know, we're we're trying to you know set trends here, and the only thing to do that is to go your own way. But I think that was a great stepping stone for us. Oh yeah, definitely. And it was, you know, I was 
I was a young one then when I saw you, and it was you know amazing for me to get to see you know uh, two of my favorite bands together uh, back then. That's that's a legendary tour. Looking back on it, and uh, speaking of which, uh, Testament of the Ancients, I absolutely love that record, man. That was a big part of my my teen years, and and uh, um, actually wanted to talk to you about this. We'll j- jump right into this. I actually picked up all the remasters that you issued, the double disc stuff. I bought those. Uh, wow. Well, the thing is that um, this might be interesting for for you and the listener is that uh, whenever we got signed to to Rotner, in the beginning, everything was like, uh, you know, happening and new for us. And then later we found out that uh, the the albums uh, were not nowhere to be found in any record store and stuff like that so uh they sold the rights to warner and i guess um we got the rights back and then we kind of uh you know came out uh, reissuing and uh i think they sound even better than the original because we put in a lot of time and effort and money to make them sound even better you know and and to give the kids like you know a taste of what what was back then but you know made it a little bit more modern yeah, and it's it's really cool, all the bonus material, and uh, anybody out there listening, uh, in the States anyway, you can get that stuff, uh, there's several sellers that carry those, and, and, and man, it's, it's it's so, they're so cool to have those, again, I had uh, a lot of those on CD, and several of them I had on cassette, so, <laughs> like, Consuming Impulse as well, uh, and so it's it's really outstanding job uh, with those reissues, man, I, they're really cool. And you know what's funny is that we're selling uh, cassettes on tour as well, and they're they they're doing really really well. I mean, the first pressing is already sold out, and I think that people in South America still love cassettes. You know, and I, I'm a huge cassette fan myself because you know I never gave up on the tape decks and stuff like that because it it, it brings back memories uh, from the days that we were into tape trading and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's really really cool and and uh, what it's you know it, it definitely I, I got in kind of the end of that but yeah I mean it was I remember uh, trading stuff for like the band Power Mad I remember getting the Cannibal Corpse uh, tape trade thing with some with a buddy of mine that had got it the first Deicide so yeah it's yeah it definitely harkens back to that it's really cool that you guys are making that available with some of your stuff it's really cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, um, that's uh, let's let's talk about this real quick because I'm ex- I was excited as well uh, as we're doing this interview. You guys are, are currently on tour. You want to talk a little bit about that for the fans? Well, yeah, uh, we're currently on tour. I think we're a week in now, and uh, first we did uh, uh, we did some Dutch shows, and then uh, uh, we're off to. Um, we're off to uh, England, and uh, this is, I think, our third show in England. We're in Manchester right now, and um, we, as we speak, we are setting up the equipment to do sound check for later on. So, uh, but there's plenty of uh, plenty of uh, places to go. We're going to Germany. We're going to we're going to uh, another uh, another show in Holland. We're going to go to um, all these places where we haven't been in a long time. So, uh, you know, it's. It's really good that there's still this interest in in a band that started back in '86, really, actually. Right. And just real quick, ask you about this because I was always curious about this. Uh, the name Pestilence, where did that come from? Well, yeah, I could say Creator uh, because they have this song called "The Pestilence," and it was around that time. And I even think that Millie Millie uh, thought that it was. Uh, that it was dead, but I think I I found it uh, by myself. It had to do with the four horsemen, and uh, one of the horsemen uh, was uh, you know uh, bringer of the pestilence, and I figured that would be a, a cool name to remember. And we were, I guess, the first. There was another American band called Pestilence as well, and uh, there was a little bit of discussion who was there first, but. Um, yeah, we got it patented, and uh, it's it's the it's it's my name now. So I'm really happy with that because I think it uh, represents the, you know the band, and it's a strong name. But I might I might even suggest uh, for an album just use the sphere, and everybody knows it's pestilence as well. So like the like the black album, 
You know, you don't yeah. need to name pestilence anymore. Just use the sphere, and everybody knows it's pestilence. Yeah, it's it's brilliant, and and, and you are. Uh, and it's you are pestilence. I I love it. I'm so happy uh, to be talking with you. And and we'll we'll hop right into the the new album. Uh, I wanted to talk with you about that. If that's cool, I was going to ask you about uh, the tracks on the album. If that's okay. Yeah, sure. Cool. And and we'll. Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, just uh, just give me the, the the titles, and I can elaborate on. Cool. Whatever. I'm going to do track by track with you, Patrick. If that's cool. Um, Unholy transcript. Right. Well, that's the, the the intro, right? It is. It is the intro, and it's it's the start. You know, it's the start of the album. That's not actual a uh, concept album, but it it gives it kind of sets the the mood for what the album is all about. It's it's the um, it's the message that the all you know uh, um, gives to whoever. Um, can lock on to the frequency and then they can find out the truth of our existence and the unholy transcript uh, like it says is a transcript uh, that is not holy but unholy and it will give you false information like uh, it's kind of a reference to what media is doing to us right now is giving us false information and we take it as being the truth right that's that's brilliant. Uh, it's really cool. It's a great title as well, and that's very deep meaning behind it. Uh, and yeah, definitely. yeah, it's amazing. Uh, and then uh, non physical existence. Well, it's non physical existent. It's not existence. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's a little twist on uh, on it. It's like the um, it's the uh, knowledge of um, that there are you know, different frequencies uh, within the realm of what we call reality that we cannot see and cannot feel. So, but they're definitely there. So, you know, you could see it, them as manifestations of of um, of ghosts that, you know, that manifest themselves in many ways and non, non-physical already says it, that they're not physical, but yet they're there. And there is proof of this, that there are ele- ele- electromagnetic fields out there uh, that you can measure, uh, but we yet to ha- have to understand what it's what it's all about. It's, it's the same as what, you know, what we consider as our cosmos. Uh, we don't know what it is, but we do know that it's there. Uh, like the black matter and stuff like this. Oh, it's that's really cool as well. Very, very interesting uh, uh, concept for the song. It's amazing. Uh, and then track three, multi-dimensional. Yeah, multi-dimensional. Again, uh, it, it's about uh, the you know we know like we named it. Uh, we gave it names like the four dimensions that we have uh, as such that we can understand. But there's way more. Uh, dimensions out there and anybody that has any interest in uh, the stuff uh, that Nikola Tesla has been talking about for the longest time and people are still interested in about other societies where there already was electricity and you know and it's like people are baffled nowadays that that you know was occurring back then and that these people had these knowledges multi-dimensional is about all these dimensions that are in the now but we only can see it from our perspective in the now right because there is no such thing as time for example you know we just made that up to give us a, a bit more structure in our lives but if i would tell you that there is no time that everything is in the now then you can understand that there's multiple realities happening right now but we can't just tune into into them because we're not capable of right. actually we're a pretty we're a pretty pretty primitive and feeble <laughs> feeble society <laughs> that we that we're not able to you know to understand what reality really is right again that's brilliant uh, just everything behind that and of course the song is amazing uh, and a track four oversoul yeah oversoul is like it's like um, what is the soul of a person what is the soul of a um, of a tree what is the soul of, of anything it has to do with energy and 
uh, again, a soul is not like one thing. It's like it's multiple things. It's multiple dimensions. So there is an oversoul. You can look it up and find the exact definition of it. But I like to give it. Always ha- like to give it uh, a twist. Um, uh, a twist to it so people can get uh, a better understanding of what reality is and what what a soul is actually it's a part it's a part of you and uh, you're using your body as a vessel it's a tool to move from point a to b uh, but what you really are is your the core is your soul and then you have the oversoul the oversoul takes care of all these souls yeah it's it's again very <laughs> amazing uh, writing behind that. That's incredibly interesting. I'm actually going to Google that later. That's very interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, because the thing because the thing is, listen, we're not a cannibal corpse. We're not one of those bands that talk about gore and 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 just the manifestation of evil and zombies shit like that. I mean, I have never been like this. I I, I did touch some of the subjects in, in you know back in back in the days you know but then again uh, you have to kind of uh, be more of an uh, you know of a trendsetter instead of just following a, a set of rules uh, which defines a scene or which defines a, a, a music style you know how can you how can you be taken seriously yourself if you only talk about blood and guts i mean i'm sorry but that's just not the way pestilence is pestilence is has always been looking for like deeper meanings you know behind the meaning of for example life well i you know to touch on that briefly before i continue with the new album i you know especially after i heard spheres i was like i mean i to me you guys are the uh the founders of uh technical death metal you guys and and gore guts and cryptopsy and all that stuff but i i think especially pestilence that's why i thought it was so important to uh to have you on today i i like i said patrick i can't i i think you're a genius but but yeah so uh just to touch on that i think i, re- I really do and like i said this just discussing this new album with you just you know it's 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 impressive it's like talking with a scientist so <laughs> it's it's amazing um uh track five I hardly see myself as a, as a genius in that regards. I mean, I'm just like a regular guy. Uh, my but just my interests go a little bit deeper than than just the stuff that normally uh, you know bands like uh, you know from from the scene would would uh, consider the you know to, to touch. Right. Well, you got like I said. I think you guys are innovators. So I or especially you know just everything that you've done. But um, materialization track five. Yeah, materialization is like um, uh, um, again. It has to. It has to do with uh, energy forms that manifest themselves uh, to you know to make this reality, make them known to this reality, this this multidimensional reality where again we we can only see and we only believe what we see and what we feel and what we touch you know but there are so many many more things out there many many energy forms out there that we have no clue to where, what they are you know and another funny thing is that you know people always try to go uh, beyond the stars and try to find if there's any alien life form out there where we are the fucking aliens ourselves and we can't even we can't even have peace on the planet you know why why trying to reach out to other life forms if we can even you know control our own totally agree with you yeah it's again yeah that's it totally agree um and then track six uh, astral projection yeah astral project- projection is more about uh finding out about yourself that um the uh the core of what you are your soul uh can be detached from your body so if you are projecting yourself you can go out of your body really not talking about the song out of the body because that has nothing to do with actually the out of body experience uh so um yeah i I just want to you know i just want to touch that subject uh, that people uh need to know that you are more than just your body 
you know people are so so um, so intrigued by you know by looks and how the, the way they look and the way they are perceived by other people you know and and you know their physique uh, where they should be more um, you know thinking about you know projecting uh, posit positive energy into the world and and then receive it back instead of believing in these false gods that you might see on TV right yeah again amazing this, this brilliant uh, uh, track seven discarnate entity yeah again discarnate entity is a, is a is an entity that that uh, that has no carnation that has no flesh so um, but this one uh, is a little bit more malicious because uh, some of the entities that uh, that are known um, you know called you know called demons for example they are like lower forms of energy and uh, when people when people die, they have to go through certain stages, and one of the stages is not to listen to these entities that try to persuade you in giving your energy, you know, your positive energy away. And uh, if you would translate it to, uh, like, uh, you know, the human uh, reality that we're living in, I bet... I bet you have it as well. You got one of those friends that you kind of really don't trust that that much, but he he calls you your friend, but actually he just wants to suck suck all of your positive energy. Maybe he wants to borrow money from you, and you have to get rid of people that are not beneficial to the, your core, who you are. But they they're the leeches. They're the leeches of society that pretend to be your friend, but really they they just want your energy and you know, try to fill you up with negativity. Yeah, that's, again, yeah, yeah, I actually do, unfortunately, know some people like that, but, yeah, it's yeah, that's, that's very nice. relatable. Everybody knows them, and, you know, in the beginning, they're kind of, they're kind of they're kinda hidden, you know, because you, you, they give you signals, but you can't really pinpoint what it is, but in the end, you will find out who your friends are and who, who, who you put your money on, and, and people that are kind of not worthy yet. Right. I, again, it's brilliant. Uh, it's deep, right? Yeah, it is, man. All this stuff is. That's this is brilliant. I love getting to do this. I can't thank you enough. This is amazing. We'll keep going. Uh, subvisions. Well, um, that's that. I, that's one that my uh, bass player did. So I, maybe he should answer that one. I have no idea how to, <laughs> okay. how to kind of fully fully get into that one. So you want him to say that to you, or or do you want to continue? Because he's right here next to me, and he's uh, he's willing to answer that one for you. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that real quick, and if you can come back for track nine, and we'll finish. Then I'll come, yeah, then I'll come back. Okay, amazing. Hey man. Hey, what's up, man? Man, Tillen here. Yeah. So Subvisions was um, kind of a, a small tribute to um, the uh, old Pestilence albums. Um, especially uh, Testimony of the Ancients and Spheres, where uh, a bass solo piece was always present on those albums. Right. right. So I, want, I wanted to kind of uh, recreate that kind of, uh, that kind of a vibe with uh, this album, but just uh, maybe go a few steps higher than that. Just, um, I tried to uh, create a little, bit, um, a little bit longer piece than those two guys did back in the, in the 90s. Uh, right. So Subvisions is basically just uh, uh, an instrumental composition that uh, actually uh, talks about the, the journey of the soul through the spheres without uh, any words. So that that that's basically it. It's just uh, it's just an instrumental piece uh, played on a bass guitar, and um, I think uh, I think it kind of fits uh, really all right with all the other songs, um, even. Um, me and Patrick weren't even uh, discussing it before we started recording, but then uh, I, I think um, our energies kind of connected uh, by themselves without e without us even discussing it, and that song kind of fit on the album. So uh, Patrick said, uh, "Yeah, let's just keep it," and uh, that, that that's about it, I guess. That's brilliant. That's and 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 thank you. That's uh, to have the insight from the from you telling who wrote it. I appreciate that. That's amazing. From the man himself, yeah, know? and I think that, um, that with this lineup, and uh, especially where in death metal, 
um, uh, the the bass guitar doesn't play like a, a really profound role, and it's just like maybe muffled somewhere under there. Um, uh, we we are actually, um, you know, Thielen is very talented, and he's got a very distinctive sound, and we needed to have that sound on the album. That's why everything fits so perfectly uh, without using any words. Some things are just meant to be. And um, I guess that's what that's what happened with this album. Uh, you know, to start off with, it was a it was a great start. Um, you know, it, also the fact that uh, only the drummer was present in the, in the studio that I had that that I could have feedback from in real time. Uh, the rest of the guys just came, you know, just gave their um, gave their files, and when we put everything together, ma- magic just was created and I think that this album is so special to me that um, to me it's like uh, it has the, the, the you know the potency to become one of those legendary pestilence album just in the same vein as in testimony or our consuming impulse amazing yeah I mean it's it's brilliant the songwriting behind this has just been amazing hearing this from you um, it really did, and then of course from from Tillin there on the on the piece uh, subvisions uh, track nine uh, manifestations. Um, didn't we just talk about them already? No, we haven't done it. Nope, because I'm going in order. Are you going in order? Yep, we yeah, did disincarnate entity yeah. last. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Manifestations is about um, the. The, the omens that we see in this world where you know stuff is going is going wrong really uh, again uh, I, I really feel strong about my message to the world and if I can reach 5,000 people with that or 10,000 I'm already happy because I think that the world has taken a, a, a a course for the worse. Te- technology has been taken over, taken over humanity in such a way that I've been already uh, warning for uh, twenty years already about this. You know, where 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 when a, a, a robot that has no feeling or a, 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 you know any program that has no feeling of emotion uh just takes rational decisions about certain uh about certain things and when you give the robot the power to be in charge of these emotions that he doesn't have i think that it's a it's a it's a really bad thing and these omens you know are the manifestations of evil really because you know we are being forced to, to be to being chipped we are forced to let go of physical money and go into this this state of credits you know and the right. chip is telling the chip is telling society or the people in charge who you are what you are without any feeling of the person so the whole definition of personality is just gone it's just like it accumulates and it becomes bigger and bigger and then i think that it takes over and we have no control over it over it you know and we have all these omens and nobody's listening everybody is just fucking just wanting to have the new samsung or wanting to have the new iphone and they're only interested in you know short-term things that kind of don't even matter in real life I mean, yeah. who cares about your smartphone? Everybody does care about their smartphone. I see it where people are not interacting anymore. There's no interaction anymore. Everybody's just like on their little screen and doing their own little thing. You know, you know what? What happened to having having dinner with your lovely lady? No, everybody has their phone. And everybody's just chatting away. You know, and I think that's a really bad omen, and nobody's taking care of business anymore. I couldn't agree with you more. It's a sign of the times, unfortunately. It seems to be, and yeah, that's that's brilliant. Uh, track ten, timeless. Well, timeless says I already touched it a little bit. I don't think that there is such a thing as time. Time is uh, the the relevance of time is is crap. I think I think that people made up time. That's why in some places. Uh, uh, they're eight hours ahead, nine hours ahead. Look, I'm in in England now, and uh, we're one hour behind. What is that? If I talk to my girl on the phone, I'm talking real time. I, I'm not I'm not in the past. Right. I'm living now. 
that's what I mean with timeless. There is no such thing as time. And if you accept the concept of the fact that there is no time, things can start to get a little bit more clear in the head because people are getting clogged with uh, misinformation about everything. People need to understand that, you know, it is time to start using your brain again and not have having technology take over you know don't go look out in the stars start from within start with your neighbor start from yeah if your neighbor's a dick i understand but <laughs> you know, you know what I'm yeah <laughs> so i totally yeah to say, right? yeah and timeless timeless means that th there is no time to lose because there is no time start now start from yourself within yourself start being rational and start using your brain and start being responsible for the actions you take in life you know and don't say well you know back in the days it was a different time back in the days it was better no the time is now you can change now you know you don't have to listen to the news you know because 99 percent is bullshit it's all manifestations of evil i couldn't agree more it's brilliant again uh uh, track 11, Ultra Demons. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I came about uh, Ultra Demons because it's, you know, there, there, there are no such things as Ultra Demons. They don't exist. And Ultra is a word for, like, over the top, right? Right. More brutal than this, more brutal than that, you know? But again, you have these demons, which are like uh, low life forms, energy forms that want to take control over you and I, I had this conversation with this guy who had um, um, had found out that there are magnetic fields this guy is like a, a genius and he has got these magnetic fields and he found out that there's some uh, hertz where, where you when you use those hertz uh, you can have sweet and pleasant dreams and then he found out that at one gigahertz uh, you you have lots of nightmares so I, then I started think, thinking about it, you know. So so these ultra demons, they live in this 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 twilight zone of the one kilohertz. And if you can tune into the one kilohertz, uh, you open up the gate for them to enter. You know, enter you on a on a, a sub uh, sub molecular level. Right. Meaning, uh, meaning, what if all diseases that are all diseases that are in this world, like cancer, uh, um, uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, uh, Alzheimer, you name them all. You know all these diseases. What if they're just what if they're just frequencies that people tune into if if they're capable of tuning into? And what if those ultra demons enter your body and kind of use your body as a vessel? to make you sick and ill and make you depressed and give you depressions and want you to make suicide and stuff like that. What if what if they take over your body and do all these things and you, you can't do nothing about it just because you can tune in to their frequency? So that's what that song came all about. That's again, that's it's very heavy. It's that's it's very interesting. Um yeah, it it really is. All of this has been. I again, this is amazing. Uh, track twelve, layers of reality. Yeah, if you understand that there are multiple realities, that not just what you see is reality, not just what you hear and feel is reality, but there are multiple realities, and these these uh, realities can be defined as layers. Layers upon layers upon layers, like an onion. You know, if you if you peel an onion, you see all these layers. And the way you watch uh, uh, an onion, from your perspective, you see it from your perspective. But for somebody else that looks at the onion from a different perspective, still sees the layers. So there are multiple layers of reality. And then if everybody's looking at that one onion, there are more onions not just one right but for, for for that person the onion that they're looking at is their reality but people have to get out of that that idea that we have that we have only one reality which is untrue yeah it's again i i agree with you and it's <laughs> it's very heavy it's cool um and then the final track on the record uh, electromagnetic yeah, 
electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic uh, the word already says it, you know, you can't see it, but you, but you do feel it. So it is a reality. It is there. And uh, electromagnetism uh, is, is, uh, is, you know, is a profound study. It is something that, you know, it can be defined and it, it is a reality and we are using it. We are filled with electromagnetism all over the place. You know, even people people get ill. You know, uh, uh, just just living under it. You know, with the with the with the poles that you know the 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 the, the telephone poles that that have the uh, electromagnetic fields, electromagnetic fields that can that can uh, disrupt uh, on a molecular level, that can disrupt atoms, that can disrupt everything. You can't see them, but you can feel them. So it it's a reality, and it's there. That's amazing. <laughs> That's very, again, very interesting. All of that. I, I can't thank you enough for doing that. That's brilliant. I, I'll, I, I love the new album. Uh, of course, I'm going to buy it physically on March 9th. Um, but awesome. Yeah, awesome. it's it's and and if you t- talk real quick, just to kind of put everything together here, you want to talk a little bit about the title for the new album. Well, hey, Dion, uh, as I mentioned before, I I like to juggle words around and make it into something else. But hey, Dion itself uh, is uh, the the oldest time, well, there is no time, but the oldest time that people know, uh, which is called the Hey, Dion. Uh, It's where uh, where the the first matter uh, was formed in two planets. Uh, and also, it's it's uh, it's a, a combination of two words: uh, the word Hades, which is hell, right, and eon. And eons mean like ages of hell, which right. I think that we that we have entered now because we're totally lost as a people, where uh, the only thing that we care about is money and greed, because and power, because those things really mean something to people. You can get things done with money. You can get things done with power. And everybody, everybody likes their power. Everybody likes to overpower somebody else to make themselves feel better about themselves. But again, we believe in false prophets, man. We we believe in false gods, and the gods uh, are, are not. You know, I don't think that nobody can help us but ourselves. And as as long as we as long as we don't see that and we don't change the way that we are as a person by starting with yourself, we're going to be living in hell for eons, man. Because you know that we're fucking we're lost as a people. We're really lost. I couldn't agree more. That's it's again brilliant. Uh, what a concept behind this record. That record's brilliant. Uh, again, the Hadeon is available now digitally and then on March 9th physically, correct? To Hammerheart. Yeah, that's, that is totally correct. And uh, yeah, I suggest that, you know, uh, you know, since since the, the, the metal scene is very conservative and uh, I love them for that, that, that people still want to buy uh, the physical uh, product because uh, without the fans, we wouldn't be able to, to do this. And I think that in a, in a time uh, where everybody is just like, uh, you know, downloading stuff and 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 just you know not valuing uh, a band's effort anymore. And uh, I think that uh, especially the death metal scene and the metal scene are still wanting to buy the physical uh, product, which I think is is a is a lifesaver for for bands that are trying to make it still because it's it's difficult to live off of music to live off metal. Definitely, yeah, especially, yeah in any way shape or form i still physically buy everything um but yeah it's i i thank you for that man because i really appreciate it uh uh, you know there should be more people like you yeah i i like to hope that there i mean I, i i still think and i could be wrong about this but i think a lot of people in europe still physically support it in the the states it's a fucking mess but you know you you yeah, got yeah, scattered yeah. throughout. There are people that do so, which is good, you know. I, I I do think that people in South America really really cherish the music and the definitely because yeah because those guys are just like are so much into it and they I mean they will give their last money that they you know that they have they they could feed their kids with that they go to a 
concert to 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 see peasants perform and i think that's amazing that the people are so dedicated to uh to the one of the forefathers of death metal definitely man and, and you you guys definitely are and and i mean i i can't thank you enough for your time uh this is this has been absolutely outstanding uh patrick and real quick before uh before i let you go uh did you want to say anything out there like some tour plans you guys have got coming up or anything you'd like to promote there for let everybody hear about um, every, I guess everybody already knows that we're after the European tour in, uh, we'll be heading over to South America in March and uh, we're going to be uh, it's going to be devastating because we'll be a, a nice and oiled machine that you know I, I see this as a step in, step in stone up to perform in, in South America and uh, we are currently also working with uh, promoters to bring us over to the States and uh, I'd love to, to tour uh, the US again and Canada uh, uh, because I think that you guys deserve uh, you know your really good dose of death metal man I take you get over here uh, I'm buying okay we'll get some drinks but yeah I'm <laughs> it's Awesome. I would absolutely love to see you guys again. It's been it's been years, but but yeah, been too long. Yeah, it's it has. It's 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 been a minute for me, but I've I've continued to follow you all through everything. And uh, uh, guys, listening, I hate you on is available now digitally, and you can get it on March not physically through Hammerheart as well as the amazing two disc reissues of their catalog. And Patrick, I cannot thank you enough for this. This is Patrick Mamali from Pestilence. And you're listening to the Phantasm Podcast. Don't tell it's hurt, and it's for you 